Welcome to my vegan journey. I might do it in two parts depending on how long I talk for, but I'm going to try to keep it fairly short because I could just talk all night. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to share a little bit about my vegan journey. Um, I love hearing about other people's stories and hearing how other people have evolved to where they are now. So I thought I'd share my story in hopes that I could inspire or just spread the word a little bit. And uh, I also want to say that this is not a stab at anyone or an insult to anybody that eats meat still or whatever. You know, this is not about that. This is just about my choices, my opinions, and where I'm at. So yeah, I have been a vegan for almost two years, which I'm really proud of it. It happened really fast for me. Some people will transition and cut one thing out at a time, but for me, that's not how it happened. Um, I just grew up on the standard American diet, as most people did. I was pretty overweight as a kid, um, pretty overweight. And then after I had my first daughter, I got into shape. Um, and then I've kind of just fluctuated with my weight on and off up until, I don't want to say up until now, but it's always a, always a battle, but what opened my eyes really was, I have held part-time jobs on and off since I had kids when I've needed to, and I worked at McDonald's for two of those, and, um, my sister was telling me, like, I can't believe you eat the food there, because I ate it, and when I was a manager, I got free meals, so I was just quarter pound with cheese and uh, chicken nuggets and she's like do you know how they raise those chickens they're pumped full of antibiotics they're given super growth hormones like it's horrible they sit in their own filth and I'm like that ah, you're full of poo um, and then I learned I learned I think it was food ink I watched first I'm not I don't even remember which one I watched first but um, I was like, okay, we're going to only get organic meat from now on. And then once you start one documentary, then Netflix suggests other documentaries to you. So I watched Forks Over Knives, which was probably one of the biggest and life-changingest things I've watched. I watched Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead 1 and 2, Vegucated, all, everything. Everything Netflix had, I watched it. And it's, it's like the wool was pulled you know off of my head the glass shattered the light bulb exploded it's amazing once you learn what you can't unsee and what you can't unlearn and and just the level of corruption in Monsanto and the meat and dairy industry and like reading I read the China study and I read prevent and reverse heart disease and I'm also have reading whole by T Colin Campbell on my reading list but just hearing about what T. Colin Campbell, um, Dr. Ornish, John McDougal, Caldwell S. Sassine Jr., like what they went through and to try to just spread their word on plant-based diet and what the meat and dairy industry is still doing to shove their propaganda down people's throats just amazes me. And, um... So after that, I started, I was like, okay, we're just going to do organic. And so I went to Costco and I spent like $300 getting like everything organic, organic chicken, organic beef, organic milk, blah, blah, blah. And I just couldn't even eat it. I remember getting a rotisserie chicken from Costco because it was super late. I'd been out grocery shopping. So I was like, here's an easy dinner. And I just couldn't eat it. It was making me sick. So I stopped eating meat. And then even, I think, after the gym one day, Zach and I made breakfast burritos for dinner with eggs, and I ate it, but I was like, this is not good. Like, it was just not good for me, any, like, good to me anymore. And so that is when I went plant-based. And, like, I think I used up the rest of the meat, like, cooking for them, and then I just haven't bought meat. Like, Zach's requested it probably five times in the last two years, and so I'll buy it, and he'll cook it. But I didn't become vegan for the animals, necessarily. I did it more for health reasons, just because if you read the Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease book by Dr. Esselstyn, it's amazing. It's a really easy read, and it's got the people from his study, like a large group of people, telling the story in their words. Not him saying it, but them 
telling the words and it shows you pictures of their arteries and just hearing their stories and you can't argue with it and my goal is to live the best life in the best health I can for the longest amount of time possible. I want to live forever basically but that's a whole nother post. Um, so yeah I didn't become a vegan for the animals but the more I'm learning the more horrified I am and the more for the animals it is. Just like I don't even know half of it either, I think. And I was talking to somebody, a coworker that I worked with at McDonald's, and I was telling them about my change to veganism, and they're like, you know, they only show the worst things on those videos. Um, yeah, that's all the worst. It's all the worst, of course it is. There's not like a PG version of what happens, you know, in the factory farms, in the chicken can chicken pens or the poor little, you know, the pigs that are trapped forever, you know, there's no pretty side to keeping cows pregnant all the time, like, it's not, and I've watched some of the footage, like, undercover footage, I watched the trailer for Earthlings, and I started crying, and I haven't watched that yet, I don't think I need to, I'm already here, um, I do want to see Cowspiracy. I've heard it's really amazing about the environmental impact that factory farming's having, but so yeah, I feel great being a vegan and it's not hard. It hasn't been hard for me. There was a couple of hard times, like when I first switched, I felt like I was in the kitchen forever. Like I spent a lot of time in the kitchen before, but like I felt like I was just constantly chopping food and cooking food and chopping food and cooking food and I was like I cried about it and like my kids were really like what the hell are you giving me and so that was discouraging when you spend hours and hours and hours and hours and they're like mm, can I have a hamburger but it's gotten easier it's gotten easier and also meal prepping anyone whether you have kids or not like no matter what you do like planning ahead makes things easier and so that's what I do and it makes things a lot easier now. I do spend a lot of time in the kitchen, but it's not like a bad thing because I like to cook and I like trying new recipes and I like, you know, doing that. And so that's not bad. And the kids are coming around. There's still some things I make and they're like, hmm, yeah, no. But they try everything for the most part and they even like will help me chop stuff and that's... You hear it a lot, like, get them involved and that they'll be more inclined to try it. It's really true. They do. Um, but, yeah, they're troopers. And, yeah, it's it's not hard. Like, I, it wasn't hard for me to give up cheese. And, like, with yogurt, there's almond yogurt, coconut yogurt, rice yogurt, soy yogurt. You find something that you like. And uh, there's pretty much replacements for everything. And something that really keeps resonating with me is when I met um, Ashley, Plant Belt Ashley, from Instagram at the Vegan Fest in Portland. Um, she's like, you know, people give us crap when we make these meat substitutes and still call it meat. And she's like, I didn't stop eating meat because I didn't like the taste. And I was like, bam! I was like, that makes a lot of sense. You know, like, we can still eat the meat and nobody's hurt. And I just love how she put that. Like, I didn't stop eating the steak because I didn't like the taste of the steak. I didn't like where the steak was coming from. And I just think that's really cool. And that's something that just keeps kind of playing in my head. But... Yeah, and I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. Nobody's perfect. I'll admit, the other day, we were going to a birthday party, and things kind of got smushed around, and the plans didn't work out, and I had to take my daughter to ballet, and she was starving and hadn't eaten, and I was not in a familiar area, and I took her through the drive through and got McDonald's. Yeah. So, I try not to be a hypocrite because I do stuff like that sometimes. But, we're human, and 
It just is what it is. I don't know. Nobody knows really. My youngest daughter is going to be two in December, and I'm raising her as a vegan. Um, my hope is that all my kids would go plant-based, but given their ages when I decided to change, I can't force them. But when they're at home, it is 95% veganism. Um, still get them ch cheese sometimes and yogurt sometimes and um, get eggs from my sister's chickens. But that's it. But the baby, I'm pretty happy. Like she, I got Ashlyn some juice boxes and I thought she'd want one because Ashlyn had one. She took a drink and she said, no, I like it. And at the McDonald's incident, she was sitting next to Jane and I was like, oh, just give her a fry to, to, you know, to keep her happy. And she took a bite and threw it and said she didn't like it. When I make home fries, she eats those. So there is hope. And I just, I hope to keep learning. Like, I need to learn more about the nutritional building blocks of being a vegan because there's still some, you know, a ton I don't know. You know, where do you get this, this, and this? And I know the basics, but I want to be able to be like, no, listen here. This is, this is how it is, and I know this. And I know I'm getting adequate nutrition, and I know I'm giving my family adequate nutrition you know, and learning more about what supplements I need and what supplements would be best for my kids or what can I do more in their diet and things like that. And that's just all going to be on me doing more research from reliable sources, you know, and I want to learn more about what I can do for the ethical side of things, what I can do to help the environment, what I can do to help the animals, because nothing should just be raised for slaughter. It just shouldn't. That's no way to live. Um, and that's why I think social media has been so good because there's so many people that are so much more educated than me that I can learn from. Um, and that's why I really love. So, I guess I'll wrap that up for now. Um, maybe I probably don't need to do a part two, but if there's any um, questions, I know I don't have that many subscribers yet. But if you have any questions or if there's something I didn't answer, or maybe I'll go back and watch this and be like, oh, I should add that in. But I hope that this could inspire some people um, to even give it a try. And I really like what Lindsay says. She's the happy herbivore. It's progress, not perfection. If you have one meatless dish a week, that's progress. If you, you know, choose a veggie burger over a meat burger, that's progress. If you choose almond milk instead of buying a half gallon of dairy milk at the store, that's progress. And it's all helpful. It's all a step in the right direction you know my dad even said I believe veganism is the better way but for me right now I just don't have time so I keep poking and poking at him and I'm hoping I'm hoping to get him to change over more too but it's all about progress we're all a work in progress I think um, and I love being a work in progress I don't really think there's a peak of perfection that you can reach like it's not I'm the perfect vegan doesn't exist. We're all just doing the best that we can with what we have. Um, and yeah, and just keep learning and keep just trying to do better. Just trying to do better for ourselves and the environment and for the animals. So it's late. I did this at night because my children are sleeping so you can hear me. But um, I'm hoping to come back with some more topics. So thank you guys for watching. Subscribe share, do the thumbs up. Um, and if there's anything else you want to know or anything we should talk about, please let me know. Okay, see you later.